OK, so in the previous video, we solved the differential equation that was dy by dx is equal to some function of x. OK, that's what we dealt with there. And we saw that we could basically solve the problem just through generic integration. Now, in the problems that follow, we will actually be trying to solve a differential equation that looks like this where in fact we have dy by dx being equal to a function of both x and y. Now, not all differential equations uh, that I write up here that are functions of x and y, uh, firstly, um, can be solved. Okay, that's the first thing to be aware of with differential equations. Not all differential equations can be solved analytically. Okay, by that I mean algebraically. In order to do that, you'd have to do it in a numerical way. Secondly, uh, you can easily, if you were starting to try and make up questions, you could very easily um, make the question very hard indeed, okay, and beyond what we study here. Okay, so we've got to be very careful and I'm going to be very careful about the examples that I set um, to make sure that they are ones that we can use um, and solve using the method that I'm going to show you of separating the variables okay so we're going to look at a basic example where we've got dy by dx is actually equal to x times y now the method of separating the variables means that I'm separating the x's and the y's. So effectively, I'm going to move everything that has a y over to the left-hand side and everything that has an x over to the right-hand side. So I'm going to make sure that I divide both sides by y in order to get the y over on the left-hand side. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by the dx. Now, this isn't a particularly good thing to do because throughout all the way through A-level maths, you've been told that dy by dx isn't a fraction. Okay, It's not a fraction, it's a limit. And time and time again, we break this rule in order uh, to get the mathematics to work. And this is another example. So I've kind of split up the dy by dx by multiplying both sides by the dx. And now what it looks like is some function dy equals some function dx. And the only thing that seems to be missing is that other end of the bookend, the integral sign. And so we actually integrate both sides at that point. Now if you're integrating with respect to y, then we don't need to worry about uh, implicit differentiation, all those bits in there. 1 over y dy integrates to log y. Now, I'm going to leave the constant of integration for a moment, and I'm going to explain that. Now we're going to integrate x dx, so we're going to have x squared over 2, and we'd also have a constant of integration there. Now, if I had a constant of integration there, and a constant of integration there, what I could effectively do is take that one from both sides and just be left with a constant of integration on one side of the equation. And that's what we do. So when we uh, are solving a differential equation like this and we get to this stage, um, we traditionally write the constant of integration on the right-hand side of the equation. There's nothing stopping us from writing it there and not writing it there, so having plus C there. It's just that, in general, we want to make it easier for ourselves to get y equals. And so we write it on the right-hand side to save another line of working. So then, that is the general solution to your differential equation. Now, I know that there, we don't have y equals. OK, so that's the general solution. We don't have y equals, but we can in this case. I'm just stopping there for the moment because I know that in some cases you won't be able to get y equals. So just be aware of that, that that could be the general solution. Now in this example, of course, we can get y equals because we can e both sides. And so we could have e to the power of x squared over 2 
plus c, like so. And you could then write this as e to the x squared over 2 uh, times e to the c, okay, because that's how indices work. And then e to the c is just any old number, so you could replace that with another constant and have that as a e to the x squared over 2. Okay, so y equals a e to the x squared over 2 is also the general solution, okay, and is a nicer way of writing it. It's just remember that at this stage, if you can't get it to y equals, then don't worry, okay, just leave it as is and work with it from there. And that's how we can separate the variables. It's all about moving all the y's over to the left, all the x's over to the right, and integrating both sides.